still hear me as I move over to this side of the room. I get very, very quiet. Sk, 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 sk. I'm not done with you yet. I kind of like you. I have not watched Euphoria, nor do I have any plans of watching Euphoria. There are probably way better people who have actually watched Euphoria to be talking about this subject. And as somebody who wears a binder myself, I think I have the right to express an opinion on a character in a movie wearing a binder and what that could possibly mean. But hopefully this video raises awareness about the issue that I'm finding and somebody can pick up the reins where I left off. Euphoria is an HBO Max TV show that's the second most popular HBO Max TV show after Game of Thrones and it is basically about the lives of teenagers exploring drugs and sexuality. And that's kind of all you need to know. That's basically the main reason why I'm not going to be exploring it for myself. This video is not about Euphoria, it's about two characters in Euphoria, specifically Rue and Jules. And even more specifically, Jules. And even more specifically than that, Jules' phenomenon of wearing a binder in the second season. Rue and Jules are both 17, and Rue is a recovering drug addict uh, who keeps relapsing throughout the first season. Now, now, Jules is a transgender girl who began transitioning at 13, and during the process of transitioning from 13 to 17, Jules has hooked up several times with older men in a way to validate his femininity. And I reserve the right to use male pronouns for Jules because Jules is a fictional character. Rue walks Jules home after a party where Jules is getting harassed by one of the boys there, and slowly they become friends and eventually lovers. After the end of the first season, Rue and Jules split up because Jules wants to run away with Rue, but Rue doesn't want to run away. So Jules leaves her at the train station while Jules leaves on a train. Later, Jules goes to a therapist and reflects on his experience with Rue, how he and Rue were truly in love, but he did he wasn't able to deal with Rue's recurrent relapses. I think I really want to go off my hormones. Here, Jules talks to his therapist about going off hormone blockers, so he'll still be on estrogen, but he'll also now have testosterone in his system, which is basically going to override the estrogen because testosterone is so much stronger than estrogen. Jules' reasoning for this is because he has spent so much of his life trying to conform to the male ideal of what a woman is supposed to be that he sort of lost himself along the way. What he's essentially doing is medically detransitioning. But of course, we're not going to call Jules a detransitioner because then Euphoria would get majorly cancelled. So, cowards. In the second season, when he's interacting with other characters, his hair is quite a bit shorter, but like it's still a pretty normal length for a girl. And another and another character calls him out for being a trans girl with a binder. Which is, you know, rare. And most trans girls don't wear binders, right? Yeah. If Jules wants to wear a binder, Jules should be allowed to wear a binder. Yeah. However, because Jules is a character in a TV show, that means that there was directorial, screenwriting, and acting decision going along into why Jules or any character does anything. I want to talk about the reason that Jules is wearing a binder and why it doesn't seem to be a good reason. So let's pretend that. So like, let's first of all explore the let's explore the possibility that. So I'd invite you to consider the possibility that the decision for Jules to wear a binder as a trans girl was a completely random and arbitrary directorial decision. I don't think having a character randomly wear a binder is an appropriate decision to make. It's like having a character stop playing with your watch. It's like having a character randomly take drugs. You have to explore the darkness going on behind it and not treat it so lightly. That's disrespectful to the tragedy going on. And a character randomly wearing a binder is no light thing because wearing a binder is actually not good for you. Now you can wear a binder in a healthy way, namely you don't wear it too long, you don't wear it while exercising. He doesn't seem to be taking the necessary precautions to wearing a binder or at least that's not expressed. Now I don't think him wearing a binder was random, but if it is, that's very irresponsible. Some people might come at me for being a hypocrite by wearing a binder myself but still having a problem with a movie character wearing a binder. And the thing I have with binders is like, if you are uncomfortable with your chest, then a binder is harm reduction. It's better than getting it removed because you might actually 
not be uncomfortable in the future, but it's still not good for you. It can cause spinal and chest deformations over time, so it shouldn't be romanticized and glorified and encouraged. It should be posed as a harm reduction option to someone who would rather get his chest cut off. Binders um, are recommended for multiple types of people, including trans men, non-binary people, and tomboys. That it usually makes a lot of people upset when tomboy is listed as an option, because a tomboy is just a woman, right? Why would a woman flatten that part of her body? And I personally have no problem with binders being advertised to tomboys, because tomboys, trans men, and ASAP non-binary non people are all females. They all have that same part of their body that they're trying to cover. So I'd have no problem with it being advertised for tomboys. As long as those tomboys have gender dysphoria. I don't think anybody should wear it for an aesthetic or because it's cool. Now, I don't think that's what the movie is doing. In the movie, it suggests that Jules is wearing a binder to move further and further away from societal femininity. Navigate the world th through his own perception of femininity. I think that's a good thing in word, but not really the way Jules is doing it. He is considering uh, biological features such as a female chest as part of just, you know, femininity that you can turn on and turn off. I don't put on a binder when I feel masculine and take it off when I feel feminine. If I'm having a bad bout of gender dysphoria and I can't leave the house or I can't like just exist ex in my body with like being able to see certain parts of myself, then I'll wear a binder. And if I'm not experiencing that severe anxiety, then I don't wear a binder. Like I don't turn it on and off based on how much femininity I'm feeling. Body parts are not part of femininity and masculinity. Men can be feminine, masculine, or androgynous, and women can be feminine, masculine, or androgynous, and should not be changing parts of their body. And you shouldn't be changing your anatomy based on your femininity or masculinity, because that is ultimately harmful. It definitely seems that Jules has trauma from being with older men, and in the movie it suggests that it was like a, a very freakishly large number. Wow, really? That's like a mentally ill amount of people. Like, if Jules wanted to wear a binder now because that part of his body was what men were seriously attracted to and it made him uncomfortable to know that his body has been used as an object so many times, that would be interesting to explore, but that's not what's going on. This is the message not shown explicitly in the movie, but is kind of communicated implicitly through directorial decisions and screenwriting. You could not have made the offer of your hand in any possible way that would have tempted me to accept it. Wandering child, so lost, so helpless. Jules is wearing a binder binder for the aesthetics. It's like wearing a corset. It not only flattens, but also causes a bit of cleavage, which at the right angle, you can capture. And during an intimate scene between Jules and another character named Elliot, the camera angle is positioned specifically to look at Jules from a certain way that sexualizes his body with a binder. And I think the movie is just trying to do that, like, Hey, we're gonna have, like, you know, this unusual trans girl character who's wearing a binder. And also we're gonna sexualize Jules in this position wearing a binder that looks kind of like a corset. So basically, if you want to wear a binder, you should be allowed to wear a binder. Dysphoria or no dysphoria. But there's no good reason to wear a binder. Even if you're wearing the correct binder, the correct size, for the correct amount of time, you are still ultimately misshaping your body over time. If you're not actively and regularly stretching, you could get spinal abnormalities. You can get rib bruising. Even if you don't get anything from them, it's literally flirting with hurting your body. Beyond just going out into the world and not wanting to be sexualized, I actually get anxiety from looking down and seeing surface area if I can see my chest. Or in the mirror if I happen to notice I have an hourglass figure. Things like that give me anxiety and having a binder reduces that. I hate to see that getting appropriated as an aesthetic and I hate to see that getting encouraged. Now, why do I wear a binder actively knowing that it could hurt me? Uh, because I don't really care, like... <laughs> I feel like I maybe should address some effects of compulsive over-exercising. Reproductive issues, such as, you know, loss of 
menstruation. This is gonna be really real with you. I. You don't need to know how old I am. But I've never done it once. And I think that's 100% related to running. Too much. And you better believe me. If that's what it takes to not get it, I'm gonna keep running. Also, if you do not eat enough and you run too much, it will stunt your growth. I have not grown since seventh grade. But for all you know, I may still be in seventh grade, haha. <laughs> How long have you been on my channel to know that I really don't care about my own health? So yeah, um, Euphoria experts, please drop in the comments what you think about my take. Euphoria doesn't understand gender dysphoria is all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs>